Good afternoon, Parramatta. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I've got a story to tell you today, and it's about Jesus. And today is the day of Pentecost. It's when it's the birthday of the church. It's when the church was empowered, and that's what today is. But also it's the beginning of a week of reconciliation with the Aboriginal people. And this message will really hearten them because they need to know that God loves them and also is with them. The day of Pentecost was a day that was 50 days after the resurrection of Jesus. And so Jesus was with the disciples and he appeared to many people uh, in the 40 days leading up to Pentecost and he told the disciples to wait in Jerusalem for the gift and it was about 10 days they were waiting and when the day came, I'm going to read about that right now the importance of it is the Holy Spirit was poured out on them and they spoke in all different languages and this is proof that that God is a God of reconciliation. So he was reconciling all these different people to himself. And so there you are, you've got a wonderful story about God and, and the Aborigines. You're all part of the big picture. And God loves you and he wants you to have a good week. So this time, you're going to hear about what happened on that day because I'm going to read it to you right now. <laughs> it says in uh, Acts 2, it's talking about what happened on that day. It says, when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were... They were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard them speaking in his own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that they each of us hear them in his own native language. So that's what happened there on the day of Pentecost. It goes on further, it's talking about um, what happened. It's talking about that it was prophesied um, that the Holy Spirit would come. It says, in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, your young men will see visions, your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. So that's what happened on the day of Pentecost. Now the very important message for today is this. 
The scriptures tell me that that particular day was a special day because God did it all. He poured out his spirit uh, just because they were there. And so the important thing about receiving the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, there's special considerations that you should have because I was raised in the Anglican Church and they didn't teach these things that I'm about to tell you and so what they need to do is take heed of what I'm about to say. The important thing about uh, the Holy Spirit being poured was Cornelius' household and the reason why Apostle Peter couldn't lay hands on them he was still a Jew in his heart and he was forbidden to lay hands on a Gentile. So that's what happened there. God poured out his spirit on Cornelius' household in the same way as he did in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost. So the important teaching is this. is in Acts 8 it tells you that when these, the people in Samaria heard the gospel, they received Jesus as their saviour, they believed, but the Holy Spirit hadn't come upon them. And so that's what happened is different to what happened on the day of Pentecost. They didn't have to do anything but just be there. But what happens with you and me and everybody else at this present time is that you hear the gospel, your heart is touched, then you do something about it. It talks about it in parables about the seed, the sower sows, and where it falls. So if you've got to do something with that seed because the devil comes and steals it, so what happens is when you hear the gospel and believe, what you need to do is simply repent and ask for to receive the Holy Spirit. So that happens. In, in, in Samaria, that's what happened. Uh, Philip went to Samaria. He preached the gospel. It's recorded in Acts 8 that all Samaria believed that the Holy Spirit hadn't come upon them. And Peter and John left Jerusalem, went to Samaria, prayed with the people, laid hands on them. And this is what the scripture says. Because uh, Simon the sorcerer is one of those who was amongst those who believed. But he, when he saw that the Holy Spirit was given by the laying of the apostles' hands, he wanted to buy the gift. And Apostle Peter said, may your money perish with you. You thought you could buy a gift of God. And he said, you have no part in this ministry. So Peter's defining ministering the baptism of the Holy Spirit as a ministry in the body of Christ. And so there you are, you've got that. He, he said that you have no part in this ministry. He said, you need to repent. So obviously, Simon the sorcerer did not repent. So that's what happened now. The, the confirmation of this is in Acts 19 when Paul went to Ephesus. He met ten disciples of Jesus there. They believed but had not received the Holy Spirit. So if it was an automatic thing as they teach in these Bible colleges that when you believe the Holy Spirit, you but it says in Ephesians 1, you're sealed. It, and it tells you elsewhere you need to be born again. To be born again, you need to be immersed in the Holy Spirit, empowered by the Holy Spirit. And you need to be a different person because the Bible says when you receive the Holy Spirit, you'll be changed into a different person. The same thing happened when uh, Saul was uh, anointed king, when Samuel the prophet laid hands on him. He said, when you receive the Holy Spirit, you'll be changed into a different person. So that's what ha needs to happen. If you're not changed into a different person, then I think you need to check out your salvation in, with fear and trembling because you need to ask, you need to repent, and you need to have hands laid on you to receive. God can do it sovereignly, but he usually doesn't. So there you are. It's, it's interesting. Gordon Gibbs, he was a, a, a mighty warrior for a Christian pastor out at Penrith. He came to Bible college while I was there and he said it took him 11 years to receive. He didn't receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit because nobody told him. So there you are. So in his, he was working in miracles and the lot after that. So he, he had a mighty ministry because 
who received the Holy Spirit. So that's what I'm commending to you all today is to be born again and to be born again is to be filled and empowered by the Holy Spirit, not just sealed as it says in Ephesians because the Apostle, um, <coughs> Apostle uh, Paul said it just immediately after the prayer that he has for the Ephesians is saying he prays that they receive these things, the power of the Holy Spirit. They hadn't received, otherwise he wouldn't be praying for them. So that's the, the, that they teach in the Bible colleges that when they're sealed, that's it, they're full of the Holy Spirit. That's nonsense according to Scripture. So God bless you all, and I, the blessings I give you today are those that the revival will take place. And this is where it was revealed to me, right in this very spot, that God shone a great shaft of light from heaven and touched everybody here. I'm hoping that it's today. Doesn't look like it because they've got a big building in the middle, of fences and everything. So don't worry, God's on the job. So God bless you all. Thank you. Like that?